preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe. This is Animal Radio. And once again, a lot of business to get to. First of all, the recall. Uh, of course, this week they announced the presence of melamine, which is uh, uh, something used to make plastic, plastic, I understand. Unbelievable. Inside tainted food. And then, of course, several other recalls this week, uh, not only on dry food, science diet dry food, and Hills dry food, but also um, salmonella. Of, yeah, and treats. Now, yeah. it's not just food. It's is treats. It dog that, treats? Yes, dog treats and cat treats are being affected. And, of course, all of your up-to-date information at AnimalRadio.com. Including a list, by the way, of foods that we think are safe, we're using, and foods, uh, well, links to the foods that might be unsafe. Uh, is that whack job online one still? <laughs> I, I don't know if he's hung up or not. Yeah. Let's go. Hello there, sir. Oh, please don't call me, sir. That's my daddy. My, name, my name's Hal, <laughs> and you're Kenneth Andrew Bell, and I take it you uh, are the... First person I've run into cockier than me. Is that possible? This is possible. I didn't Can think I put so. it on the list? I'll go ahead. I'll put it on the list. What the okay. heck? I like it. You have your. Uh, do you, you have a radio show? Is that correct? In uh, I have everything except a radio. I have an internet. I have podcasts. I have a television show coming up. You are uh, just I have a, a magazine called QPEC Gazette. I have everything except radio. Isn't that nice? A media maven is what you are. Yeah. And, and but, uh, if listeners like you, then you'll have radio. Okay? Well, see, okay. see, they get to hear me, and then they can go watch my TV show at your website, or they can download it somewhere. Hey. Let, let me just figure out why you're on the show. First of all, we get a lot of emails here, as you can well imagine. And, of yeah. course, when uh, the pet food recall started, that... Uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, we got a lot of emails, a lot of calls, and you sort of have to sift through all these emails and see what might be credible and what might not be credible. Understand. And your your email fell into the, mm, mm, we don't know, and we're not going to report this. <laughs> and I even think I put on the email, you may not want to report this, but... <laughs> So there are ideas and things that and things that I have found in my research that I just simply will just tell you okay. whether right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm going to have to do it based upon my experiences from the past thirty to forty years. Okay, <laughs> with your experiences in the past thirty to forty years, I'd like you to tell the listeners pretty much what you think and what you know. Well, let's begin with the fact that it was a recall. Okay. Fantastic! It was recalled. Somebody found out that some dogs and cats, mainly cats, were getting sick, and they recalled it all. Mm -hmm. Fantastic menu foods. I think menu foods, the last I've heard was the company that was initially involved or they initially tracked to. Mm -hmm. Now, menu foods is, from all experiences that I have known, and I've even met people that have worked for menu foods, mm -hmm. is a fantastic company. Okay. Every one of their executives has a Ph.D., their animal sciences, they've got advanced degrees, they, they rarely run around their corporate offices causing trouble. I understand that. Or, or adding things in their products that should never be there. For well, they're obviously a very successful company, we can see by how widespread this is. Yes. Well, that's another thing. Because they are so good at what they do, because they are used by just about everybody there is, that should never be held against them. It just means they're very good at what they're doing. Sure. So, do, But you have a conspiracy that perhaps somebody was trying to take them down? Of course. Why not? Okay. They're headquartered in Canada. Uh-huh. But, but from what I found out now... But, oh, by the way, they're headquartered in Canada. Those but they damn have, Canadians. Yeah, they, yeah, but they have offices all over the U.S. Sure. They have New Jersey, for under, understand Kansas, and uh -huh. yeah, it comes from everywhere. Uh -huh. But my big thing was, besides menu foods and immediately going Canada, uh -huh. was that, from what I had seen nationally, they mentioned very particular brands. Mm -hmm. It was almost as if they were ready for this story, you okay. know, like they have like an old person famous that they have like the uh, the video ready in case they die yes. you know they've already got it prepared <laughs> yeah this we were we were ahead of way. the story on morris before morris died we had a whole vignette prepared yeah, exactly. so i understand <laughs> that's terrible but yes it happens you know people too we understand that but one of the one of the brands out of over a hundred brands that were listed and named and could have been listed and named was imes yukonuba big 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 okay fine the thing is they had the product of Imes, the product of Yukonuba on the stations, on the local shows, on the morning shows, in your face, 
saying poison, toxic, and recall, mm -hmm. and they shoved the brand Imes in your face. Mm -hmm. That I knew instantly this was all prepared. Now, who would want to take down Imes? Well, anybody else. Okay. Anybody in the food industry. What the heck? Well, I know about a, a handful of, uh, of people that weren't hurt themselves within the industry uh, that have fine foods, that have human-grade foods. Uh, who, who, I, I don't understand. I, who I would want to well, take them down? Nothing. This was actually nothing against Imes. It had actually, they just kind of take, well, now from what I understand, because I haven't really been following this, because I don't need to. Sure. About three weeks ago, I kind of wrote out the blueprint that's going to happen. Okay, so tell and us. And this was just one of them. Okay. What Imes is now doing is they're now taking advantage of the situation. Uh -huh. They're coming out with big ads about how concerned they are. You know, they're, they're just a national media blitz now. Yeah, this, we knew that was going to happen. Well, but... yeah, okay, but still, you don't do that. I mean, it just when somebody recalls a car because of defective, uh, you know, seatbelt, do they come out with sympathetic ads from the employees? We know this is a sympathetic issue, and that's fine. There was no necessarily somebody out to get a particular company. Well, but, but that's what you just said. Is that what no, you just I, said? I didn't mean. No, that's what they did in the media initially. Okay. Now, out of a hundred brands, why just show Imes? Uh, That's something for the media to answer themselves. Now, I, I can answer that. I know why I would show Imes, because Imes seems to differentiate themselves from the Western family or the generic brand on my shelf. And it's the, the, the irony of this whole thing is that such a high-end food would be affected. So immediately I think Imes, I think Yukonuba, I think Purina even. Right. Well, the other thing is planet Earth. Eventually, all the wheat gluten that we know comes from planet Earth. Are we going to now blame planet Earth? It's, it's like that's where it came from. So if you say, well, Imes needs to hold themselves from a different standard because of where they should get their pro it still came from Earth. <laughs> can, can, can it, didn't it make a stop somewhere in China? Well, here's the thing about China. Now we're calling it a country. Yes. We went from menu foods located in Canada... To now we're going to go to war against China. Mm. Where did we all of a sudden go, less than a breath away, let's get China? We have now banned the product. We have stopped all shipments from the companies. And guess what? Without inspection. They're not doing any inspections at all. Just recalling it. Okay, so you know what? I'm not, a, I'm not really able to put together the dots here, uh, especially... Oh, I can. Well, um, I, t t <laughs> tell me. Keep... Give me some time. Well, uh, you know, I, don't, I have an hour, a couple hours every week here. And uh, <laughs> in your email, you mention President Bush. Got right. Okay. Well, everything is from everything the FDA does. Everything the USDA does, it's all laid out. They have plans. Why would the FDA, and by the way, Osama Bin Laden still runs free, and we've never found who leaked Valerie Plain. Yet we can find out the specific ingredient in wheat gluten from an animal pet food that came originally from Canada and then from China in less than a week? You tell me what we're capable of doing as humans. <laughs> it was astronomical to be able to find what now is morphing into different reasons as to why it happened. Who's sure. benefiting from this financially? Well, the people who have to import. If you no longer are allowed to import anymore because of the huge death toll that's occurring, you now have to look at manufacturers who only produce where? Well, let's say in the States, for example. Well, no, that's all fine and dandy, but just think about the human aspect. For the first time in history, this same administration is allowing chicken to be raised and grown in China and then sent back to the U.S. That's the first time we've ever done that okay. because so much care has to be used in the material, in the guidelines, in watching these things. Now, how is it? Now, is it rat poison or have they changed it to something else now? It's now melamine. It's a melamine. Yeah, a component used to make plastic. <laughs> okay, you know what, Here, Kenneth? I know what melamine is. Yeah, uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm melamine gonna... <laughs> does heat resistance. Yeah. Melamine is found in fire-resistant gloves. Melamine makes uh, dry erase boards. 
Sure. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and let the listeners make the call on this one. This I think is the first time in the seven year history of it. Today we are making records. This is <laughs> history. History today. One eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. Is Kenneth uh, making sense to you? Am I just uh, out of place? Let me know what you think right now. One eight six six four zero five. 8405. Is there a website, Kenneth? Can uh, people learn more about you? Oh, yeah. Cute Pet Gazette. Two, two Pet Gazette? Cute. 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 I mean, really, really cute. Oh, Cute C- Pet cute Gazette. Cute Pet Gazette. And we're also having a television show that's coming up called How Cute Is Your Pet? Every All the ex- exhibitors know who we are. If you pull up any pet toy company or anybody like that, or any specialty food companies. Now, specialty food companies would benefit from something like this. Sure they would. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of them. And they have a lot of pull. <laughs> I mean, would you... We get a lot of products from China. Let's not turn this into a country name-pointing and finger-pointing. There's too much good that comes from there. <laughs> I have, although I have never physically been to China and seen the, the, um, the factories themselves, I have met the human beings and I have seen the digital photographs of where they do process this food. Now, it is so clean, I would lick the floor to prove it to you. They keep their, their areas and their work environments and their production facilities so spick and span, it's just ridiculous. It's beyond clean, really. It, it had to get in somewhere over there. Right. But people don't run around throwing melamine, which is, I can't believe they're actually going to say that this is the reason. I bet the FDA well, well, has never said well, well, that that... That is the exact reason. Well, actually, that was uh, the last announcement uh, from the FDA, I believe, uh-huh. actually. But, but well, let, me ask you, let, me, let me ask you a question uh, before we let you go. Uh, Never let me go. Always I, call me back. Go well, ahead, yes, yeah, I want to know <laughs> what's next. What's oh, going to happen what are you next? Predicting? If it's already gone this way, and we've already, in less than a week, already declared that an entire country of China should now be looked at, what are we now going to be looking at here, folks? We're going to be looking at some strange requirements, guidelines, rule changes that will make no sense, will be completely out of fear, they'll affect your pocketbook. We have the absolute safest pet food supply anywhere in the universe. And on that, Kenneth Andrew Bell, one 405 8405 your comments. i got to go double my dose of Paxil. We'll be right back. It's Animal <laughs> Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at AnimalRadio.com. Log on. Learn more. Animal Radio is brought to you by VetFlex, the cutting-edge liquid glucosamine formula with 11 essential ingredients for helping pets suffering from arthritis and joint pain. Help ease your pet's pain the VetFlex way at www.VetFlex.com. Did you see the paper? They mentioned cloning animals for food. Seriously? I thought cloning was still pretty experimental. It is. Most of the animals die or are born with some sort of health defect. So why is the FDA going to approve it? I don't know. It's upsetting that the FDA seems to be ignoring scientific evidence that animals in cloning suffer. And and the FDA says that it won't even label cloned foods. That's outrageous. Yeah, and we could be eating meat or drinking milk from cloned animals and not even know it. Is there anything we can do to stop this? You can. Contact the American Anti-Vivisection Society at www.endanimalcloning.org to learn more about the problems with animal cloning and to help keep cloned food off grocery store shelves. Cloning animals for food is not just about food safety. Animal suffering and other ethical issues have been ignored for too long and must be considered. To learn more, visit www.endanimalcloning.org. Just because we can clone animals for food doesn't mean we should. Every once in a while, there comes along a special group of animal lovers that stands strongly in defense of the voiceless. Animal People is that newspaper for people who really care about the animals. Animal People is published ten times yearly. The publisher is a nonprofit corporation dedicated to exposing the existence of cruelty to animals and to informing and educating you so that animal lovers worldwide can eliminate such cruelty. Your subscription is $24 a year. Get Animal People's fair and accurate investigative reporting from the industry watchdog. Visit our website at www.animalpeoplenews.org. That's www.animalpeoplenews.org to subscribe to the news for people who care about animals. Animal People. 
Subscribe today at www.animalpeoplenews.org. Judy, one of the studio cats just vomited under my desk. Can you clean it up, please? <laughs> you can do it. Me? I'm busy booking all the celebs for the show. I, I don't do stains. Well, now you can. Go ahead, grab that bottle and get serious over there. Uh-huh. I, it's going to remove both the stain and any pheromones left behind. Just go ahead and squirt it on, work it in, and all you have to do is blot it with a thick towel and hold it for about five seconds. Come on, I know you can do it. Okay, I'll give it a try. I'm squirting. I'm working it in and blotting. And, whoa. The stain is gone. You mean you were able to remove the stain all by yourself? Women, get serious. It's so easy to use. Even men can do it. Hey! Yeah, so don't take any more excuses from those guys. It's time to get serious. You can find Get Serious at PetSmart and in pet stores all over. Visit their website at GetSeriousProducts.com. Animal Radio is brought to you by the American Anti-Vivisection Society. Stop the FDA from allowing milk and meat from cloned animals to be sold in grocery stores. Contact the American Anti-Vivisection Society for information at www.endanimalcloning.org. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe, this is Animal Radio. 1-866-405-8405. 1-866-405-8405. Those are toll-free numbers. All week long, you can get in touch with us. Uh, and the phones seem to be burning white hot. Uh, it's really no surprise to me at all. Hi, who's this? This is Kathy from Palm Springs. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? In beautiful Palm Springs. I'm a little bit jealous, I'll tell you that <laughs> well, right now. Well, you should be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say it's raining or something cold. No, it's 82 degrees and the sun is shining. It's paradise. It sounds like it. Now, now has the uh, pet food recall affected you? Yeah, actually it had. And, you know, in the beginning I thought maybe it hadn't. We we didn't buy the pouches. We bought a canned food. And it was a, a variety that was part of the recall, but only in the little pouch food. So we really didn't think it had until we went to our local pet store. And uh, they had a big sign up and said anything made by this company. They didn't want to take any chances. They wanted us to bring the stuff back. Yeah. So we hadn't had any problems with our dog whatsoever, none. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, we thought about it for a while and then said well you know let's see if there's something else he'll eat so we did try a different variety and you know i'm not so sure about anything people are always so quick to jump on the conspiracy thing and you know i'm not saying that it couldn't happen i'm not saying that it didn't happen but i do know that um it's a pet food that from the company i won't buy again only to take the chance of you know i've seen so much in the news of these poor little puppies dying and 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 suffering so much and it almost makes you want to go back to the natural foods and start doing things yourself. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's what we've done around here at the studios. And, of course, there are a handful of great foods out there. But uh, according to Kenneth, uh, they would be good candidates for the conspiracy also. Uh, but, uh, you know, at least, at least we put it out there to you. Yeah, good to hear all sides. It yeah. really is. Thank you so yeah. much for calling. Enjoy your uh, Palm Springs. <laughs> and, uh, I'll send a little your way. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much. one 866 405 You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at AnimalRadio.com. Log on. Learn more. Well, hello, Jill. Hi, how are you? Doing very well. Jill Kobe joining us, Aspen Grove's general manager. Aspen Grove is, uh, I imagine, a new shopping center because I I grew up in that area there. And I'll tell you, it didn't even exist when I grew up there. (laughs) You're showing your age. Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) Uh, Right there, south of Denver, sort of the, what is it, the centennial area? It's in Littleton. Littleton, okay. Yeah. And you've uh, you've hooked up with the Denver Dumb Friends League, uh, an organization that's always done fine work. And I guess there's going to be like a, 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 a mass doggy wedding is, is what I'm to understand. That's true. Mass dog wedding ceremony. Okay, tell, tell me what it's all about. <laughs> you know, um, as you know, growing up in Colorado, um, Denver is extremely dog friendly. Mm-hmm. And when we opened our doors five years ago, we noticed that... There was a need for people wanting to shop with their dogs. So we became one of the first dog-friendly shopping malls in the center, or actually in the state, and it's a program that's just really grown. And we decided that um, we thought to follow our dog-friendly program that just for laughs and giggles, we'd have this mass dog wedding ceremony because... (laughs) 
Because <laughs> we see the dogs all the time with different shoppers, and they chat, and they meet, and we thought that would be the next step. Now, let me get this right. Uh, all of your 55 stores and restaurants allow you to shop and eat with, uh, with your pet. Almost all of them, with the exception of two or three, and then with the restaurants, they're welcome on the patio. Oh, very good. I like yeah. that. Uh, that's uh, a sign of the times. So are you trying to break a Guinness Book World of Records, and what is that record? Yeah. You know what? The record is only 27 dogs. It was set in the Netherlands, and that is going to be a snap for us. Oh, <laughs> sure, sure. So now uh, doggies will be... Now, i, I got to be real honest with you. I never even heard of this until we had... Uh, who was it? Victoria Jackson on from Saturday Night Live. Right. And she, she came on, and she said she had a, a doggy wedding for her dog. Well, she had a male and a female, and she wouldn't let them live together sure. in her house without being married. Well, that's, you know, that's the right way to do it. So, yes. Uh, so so uh, you're, you're expecting at least uh, 27 pairs of dogs down there to, uh, and who's going to officiate over this? You know what? We're still working on it right now, but we've got lots of people that are interested. Sure. And what if uh, your dog doesn't have a mate? That is no problem at all. Really? Because, yeah, because um, the event is we're going to have around a speed dating ahead of time. <laughs> Oh, so you can find a mate there, huh? Dating ahead of time. There you go. Um, any lawyers there for uh, quickie divorces? No <laughs> prenups needed, although my pug, Aunt B, is getting married, and I may have her sign a prenup. <laughs> uh, what's, her, what's her name? My pug, Aunt B. Aunt, Aunt B. B. Yeah. Is she getting married to another dog in your household, or is she going to pick a mate? In the office. She's married a real hunk. He's another pug. His name's Lloyd. <laughs> How long have they known each other? They met about a year ago, and we bring our, on occasion, our dogs to work, uh-huh. and they just fell in love. <laughs> sure, sure. You know, uh, Jill, though, I'm very concerned at uh, very impulsive decisions, lifetime decisions being made here. <laughs> you understand that, right? Yes. Okay. I want everyone that goes down there to, to have fun, but uh, to realize that this is a lifetime commitment. This is serious this stuff. This is serious stuff. Yeah. I, I, I assume there will be photographs of the uh, the animals. What about, uh, uh, like, uh, what the, what would they wear? Do, is there a store there that uh, carries the stuff? I mean, what what are you planning in that area there? Well, every um, every pooch that shows up, um, if you're a girl, we're going to give you a veil, and if you're a boy, we're going to give you a bow tie because they have to be dressed properly. Of course. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. It's happening uh, on May 19th at 2 p.m. Is right. there a charge for this? No, we're just asking for donations for the Dumber Dumb Friends League. Of course, uh, and again, a great organization there. Sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, will you take some pictures for us that we can post on the Animal Radio website? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, we appreciate you spending time with us today, and we hope you have lots of fun, and I hope you definitely get that Guinness Book record there. Yes, absolutely. And I wanted to pass out the website real fast, uh, www.shopaspengrove.com. And, of course, remember URLs to everything you've heard on today's show at uh, AnimalRadio.com. Jill, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Hold on one second. Hi, this is Dick Van Patten on Animal Radio. And be sure to spake your pets. VetFlex is the cutting-edge liquid glucosamine formula with 11 essential ingredients for pets suffering from arthritis and joint pain. VetFlex is absorbed into the body up to three times faster than pill form. Liquid glucosamine found in VetFlex is the most effective formula on the market today. VetFlex promotes cartilage growth, increases mobility, eases your pet's pain, and is easy to administer. Just add to food or water. Help ease your pet's pain faster. The VetFlex way at www.vetflex.com. This is Animal Radio Network. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe. This is Animal Radio. Do you have a fat cat or a fat dog? We have a fat cat here in the studio. I'm just asking, nothing personal, but it could mean the difference between life and death, and that's on the way uh, with Dr. Jim Humphreys. But first, line, what is that, seven? Well, hi, Denise. Hi, Hal. How are you? Very well, Denise Fleck joining us. You're the founder of Sunny Dog, Inc., and you've also uh, brought to our awareness, of course, Pet First Aid Awareness Month. Absolutely. kind of important because none of us really think about... uh, well, giving our 
animals, CPR, or having to apply first aid, we always think we can rush them off to the vet. Well, you don't think it's going to happen to sure. you. Sure, you think it's uh, always going to be somebody else. Mm-hmm. But uh, you actually, now do you teach CPR? And, uh, I do. I teach a four-hour class, and then I just do a lot of shorter introductions to pet first aid at libraries, at high schools, at museums, whoever will listen to get them to at least learn some of the basic skills to help their pets. Because it's like you just said, emergencies do occur suddenly and without warning. And statistics do show that preventable accidents are the leading cause of death amongst our dogs and cats. And you're located in Los Angeles, so if you're listening on Coast or K-Big, uh, I'll give you some information how you could get into one of Denise's classes. If we don't live in that area, how can we learn CPR and pet first aid? Well, the American Red Cross, who I've trained with, teaches classes around the country. For pets? Absolutely. As does Pet Tech, Inc. They have um, more than 100 instructors throughout the United States. Wow. Oh, and how do we get in touch with these people? Um, just Google them. <laughs> That's probably the simplest way. And their websites will come up, and you can find an instructor in your area. Okay, are well, you finding that more and more people are signing up for these types of classes as... Years ago, absolutely, no one... absolutely. When I first started teaching it, it was like you give mouth to mouth, and I prefer <laughs> to call it mouth to snout, yeah, sure. um, to a dog or a cat. And I said, absolutely. But now I really actually sometimes have a waiting list for some of my classes. Well, now, is this personal for you? Well, how did you start doing this? Well, um, one morning, my husband and I awoke to the precious face of our yellow Labrador retriever, Sunny, mm-hmm. and she couldn't get up off the floor. And when she tried, she just literally let out what was like a blood-curdling scream. Mm. To make a long story short, she had ruptured three discs in her spine. Oh, no. Overnight? Yeah. Well, it wasn't an injury. It was just a genetic defect that reared its ugly head that morning. Mm. But at that time, we lived in a house that was 110 railroad ties steps from the car to the house. (laughs) So it was a real feeling of helplessness. Mm -hmm. And I was actually a publicist working at a studio then. And I realized I needed to do something more than feed human egos. I needed to start changing my direction and really help people to help their animals. And about that time, I heard they were looking to train people to become instructors. So I jumped on the bandwagon and have been teaching for about eight years now. That's very exciting stuff there. Now, i got to ask about first aid kits, because I actually put together a little kit. I don't know if it has everything in it that I should have in it, but I know that when I travel with my animals... Uh, I have at least bandages and gauze and some uh, hydrogen peroxide. What else should be in a a standard first aid kit for your pet? Well, and I'm glad you mentioned the bandages are always important because you do want to be able to stop bleeding and prevent infection from getting in. And you probably have the hydrogen peroxide there to flush out a wound. Sure, yeah. Okay, well, actually, we use it for something much more important with our animals. Okay. We use it to induce vomiting when they're Mm. poisoned. Mm, Like uh, Ipecac. Exactly, but the Ipencac takes 30 minutes to work on dogs and cats. Yeah, and this will work Where the hydrogen peroxide works within a matter of seconds to minutes. It really does the trick. So that's a wonderful item to have in your first aid kit. You administer one tablespoon per 15 pounds of the animal's body weight. Oh, that's good to know. I I know that they actually used to use that stuff uh, uh, for toothpaste, so I know it is ingestible. It's not going to... Right, well, and it's going to come back up with the poison, hopefully. But additionally, you always want to have fresh water for your pet and something to provide it in and you know the water obviously can flush wounds and do other things and we like having tweezers to pull ticks and you need some sort of tape or a flexible wrap to hold the bandage in place because once you've um, stopped bleeding on a wound you want to make sure you keep it covered in order to prevent that you know infection from getting in additionally you should have some sort of antacid Mm, um, because Pets do get stomach upsets, and if you if you're just on a car trip, what I sometimes suggest are taking along a box of ginger snap cookies. Okay, yeah, because that kind of does the trick. (laughs) And dogs love. What about for the dog? (laughs) That's for the dog. Oh, okay. (laughs) That's for anybody's tummy upset because we do need to acclimate our dogs and cats early to car rides because they're used to having four on the floor, their own four on the floor. Mm -hmm. And if they um, haven't done many car rides, you need to acclimate them slowly in order to do so. Sure, sure. We're starting to slip into summer in most of the country, and uh, that means it's getting hot. Uh, You see more cases of heat stroke around this year in the veterinarian's office, especially with dogs. 
How can we avoid that? And then, of course, how do we know if our animal's been exposed to heat stroke? Or heat? Well, the number one thing I have to say is don't leave your pet alone in a parked car. Mm-hmm. If you can't take them with you at every stop, they're better off at home. Um, heat stroke can lead to permanent brain damage and death. So you know an animal's too hot if he's panting heavily. His tongue and gums are bright red rather than the bubblegum pink color they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And he may be trying to vomit, but in most cases, there'll just be a little foam around his mouth because he's so severely dehydrated, there are no fluids able to come up. So you need to cool him off quickly, not an ice bath, but cool him off with a hose or put him in a tub of water, concentrating on getting the skin wet. Don't just try to hose down the back of the animal, but get the underbelly and the pads of the feet wet. Mm -hmm. And what I like to always say, especially if it's hot weather and you use a hose on your pet, please run the hose to the side for a few moments first because that initial stream of water can be very hot that's been laying in the hose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you want to take the temperature and get it down to 103 and get him to the vet as quickly as possible. Okay, Denise Fleck is with us. The website, uh, www.sunnydoginc.com. Uh, what, what are we going to find there? Well, you're going to find my pet tip of the month. I put um, a mu- tips up every month that pertain to that time of year, whether it be Halloween tips or hot weather tips or holiday tips or just pet first aid awareness tips for April. Because according to the American Animal Hospital Association, one out of four more pets could be saved if just one first aid technique were applied prior to getting veterinary assistance. So please learn those skills. I also have a list of all my classes and lectures and demonstrations on the website, as well as my pet first aid kit, which I have created with a veterinarian. Denise, thanks so much for what you're doing. SunnyDogInc.com is the website. Thanks for having me. Animal Radio is brought to you by Out Deluxe Training Pads. Traditional newspaper training is old news. Out Deluxe Training Pads are 10 times more absorbent, scientifically treated to attract pets and control odors. Available nationwide at major discount and grocery stores. Fat pets is a poor prognosis. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jim Humphreys reporting for Animal Radio. The saying goes that pets look like their owners. Well, these days, that old adage holds true more than ever as the obesity epidemic expands to our dogs and cats. Obesity is a very significant problem in both dogs and cats, says veterinarian Scott Allen Brown, head of the Small Animal Medicine Department at the University of Georgia in Athens. About one in five to one in three animals are overweight or obese. Rocky and Fluff are born to be hunters and scavengers, but today they don't have to stock their prey or scrounge for a meal. We see large numbers of domesticated pets being fed very high-quality food, but they live very sedentary lives with limited exercise, says Brown. Quite honestly, it's analogous to what we see in the pet owners. Lassie earned her chow by working on the farm and rescuing Timmy. But pets today are born retired. After sleeping the day away alone at home, many animals spend their nights collapsed in front of the television, watching Dancing with the Stars with their owners. Plus, neutering will decrease the caloric intake of a pet by about 5%. So sluggish metabolism, inactivity, and overeating not only adds pounds, but it also takes a health toll. Hefty dogs and fat cats are at an increased risk for type 2 diabetes, arthritis, and cancer. They frequently develop weight-related behavior problems, too. Mentally unchallenged and physically inactive pets become very bored. So, they act out in not very good ways with excessive barking, more anxiety, and destruction. It's the number one reason pets are surrendered to shelters or euthanized. Since dogs and cats don't control their food and can't usually determine when and how active they are, the responsibility for pet pounds rests with the owner. Just as overweight parents are more likely to have overweight kids, so are overweight owners likely to have overweight pets. Also, about half of all owners of overweight pets can't identify their animal as such. So owners need to learn to monitor their pet's weight by sight, touch, and weigh-ins about four times a year. Dogs should have a slight middle indentation, like a waist, when they stand and when they're viewed from overhead. 
You should be able to feel but not see their ribs when you touch their sides with your fingertips. Cats and smaller dogs can be weighed at home. Simply get on the scale with your pet in your arms, then subtract your own weight from that total. Check with your veterinarian to see if the weight is within a healthy range for your pet. It may be tempting to provide your pet with a bowl of food that can be eaten at any time during the day, but it's better to feed your pets at regular times, once or twice a day is recommended. Measure all food and don't give table scraps. That only adds calories and less desirable ingredients such as sodium, unhealthy fat, and sugar. For overweight animals, limit treats and gradually cut back on their regular food, either by portion control or by choosing a food that's lower in calories. Working with your veterinarian, aim for a safe or slow 1-2% to weight loss per week. It is especially important not to cut back suddenly on cat's food, since doing so can produce serious and sometimes fatal liver problems. Regular exercise is also key to helping dogs and cats maintain a healthy weight or weight loss. Figure that dogs need to be walked at least 15 minutes twice a day, and frankly, the more the better. Proceed gradually, however, in increasing physical activity for a dog that's middle-aged, sedentary, or overweight. Just be careful. They can become lame or sore, just like people. Talk to your veterinarian before you start a rigorous exercise program. Getting fat cats to be active can be a little more challenging. You might try playing with them with one of those uh, string toys. Get them to be somewhat aerobic or active at night. You might even try dividing their food into three or four portions and placing that food around the house in different bowls. That way cats have to actually expend the calories just walking around the house looking for their food. For the Veterinary News Network at MyVNN.com, I'm Dr. Jim Humphreys reporting for Animal Radio. As the director of a busy rescue shelter, I'm constantly house training. And as any pet guardian will tell you, house training can be frustrating and confusing for both you and your pup. And learn bad habits like using newspaper is hard to break. We use Out Deluxe training pads because they're sent to track dogs. Here's two tips from somebody that knows. Speed up the house training process through consistency and Out Deluxe training pads. There's no easier or cleaner way to train your pup. Find Out Deluxe training pads at major discount and grocery stores nationwide. Scoop Free, the revolutionary self-cleaning litter box announces the Scoop Free Shelter Program with free products and financial assistance to not-for-profit animal organizations. Use Scoop Free to enhance the care of cats in your shelter or use them in your auctions and raffles with 100% of the proceeds going to your shelter. Scoop Free also provides discounts and donations for Scoop Free products used by adopting families. Find out how your shelter can participate at www.scoopfreeshelters.com. Hi, this is Clive Sears from HGTV. You're listening to Animal Radio. Please, please remember to spay and neuter your pet. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe. This is Animal Radio. What? I'm looking at you. I'm following your cue. Looking at me like I'm Sanjaya <laughs> or something like that. No. Yeah. I, you know, I tell you, if he wins, I'll never watch American <laughs> Idol again. And I've been a big fan for all the different seasons, but this may end it for me. Really? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Well, we, we have on the phone with us a very important Humane Society guest, so we got to move on. Okay. Enough of our personal lives, <laughs> personal television lives. Oh, boy, this, this really, really makes me feel unhip. And so old. <laughs> We're like the Ninja Turtles uh, of years, th- ago. years ago. Yeah, my son was big into those. We're and th- he's 30. 30 years <laughs> old. Oh, my God. Well, there's a new movie coming out. It's TMNT, which I assume stands for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> uh, capturing a brand new generation. And, of course, as this happens, there's always sort of the urge to head on out and get a pet as a turtle. Uh, a turtle is a pet, and I actually had a snapping turtle as a pet. They're, they're, they are very good pets, but I always get a little bit concerned when a movie drives the sales of animals. I brought in uh, Beth Price from the Humane Society of the United States. Hi, Beth. How are you doing? Great. 
Well, tell me, what's, uh, w- what happens when these movies come out, and, and what's the HSUS stance on this? Well, first, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about Turtles. Um, as, as you say, when, when the uh, first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie came out in 1990, sales of pet turtles took off. And, and so did, as a result, cases of salmonella in children. Mm, um, because so, they carry salmonella? Yes. In fact, all reptiles do. But really? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, yes. Uh, and what many people don't know is that it's illegal to sell small turtles because of the disease risk. Uh, turtles with shells smaller than four inches. Now, that may seem contradictory. If all reptiles sell, uh, carry salmonella, why just the small turtles? Right. Yes. Well, this, this rule was put into effect... Uh, 30 years ago because children touch small turtles. Not only do they touch them, they might even put them in their mouths. Well, but uh, now here's what I don't understand. The reptile uh, as a pet is becoming more and more prevalent, especially in in places where uh, it's too small to have a dog or a cat. Uh, And you're telling me that touching these animals could cause salmonella? Absolutely, and not even that indirect contact. The animal can crawl across the floor and and leave the salmonella behind, and you might not even know that you've been in contact. Uh, There's a very sad story about a high school teacher who would carry a snake around his neck in his classroom, Mm -hmm. uh, knew very well he needed to wash his his hands before going home, uh, and did that, and, and then would hold his child, and the salmonella was on his clothing, and the child contracted the salmonella that way. So even indirect contact can spread the disease. So, so this is really part, there's really two reasons we think at the Humane Society of the United States that reptiles don't make good pets. The first one is the health risks, as we're talking about, the salmonella, uh-huh. and the second is the humane aspects. Uh, these are not very easy to care for animals. In fact, they're wild animals that just fare best in their natural habitat. Uh, so people get a small turtle. Uh, it quickly, you know, it, it will either die in that little dish that we all had in the 70s. With oh, the yes, little we little all had those growing up with the palm tree. And <laughs> that's right, that's uh-huh. right. And, and those turtles all died, and that's what happened. Well, they, that's not, I don't know that that's true, because I remember at the end of the season, we had to take him back to where we found him. <laughs> My dad made me do that because he said he, he wouldn't make it through the season or something. But right. they can't, well, that's the, that, that is the, another piece of why we don't think these animals make good pets. Uh-huh. People, they, they, they outgrow their interest, they outgrow their tank, and people release them in the wild thinking they're doing the animal a favor. Well, in fact, it's really disruptive for the environment. That animal can bring disease to the animals that are, that are in, the, in the natural environment. That, that species may not even be native to that environment, and it can displace the native turtles. So in a place like Florida, where red-eared sliders, which are very popular pets, aren't native, we're seeing you know large amounts of them you know establishing breeding populations. These are issues for these communities. So you know there's you know there's you're right. They they, they seem like they're easy to care for pets. They mm-hmm. may be marketed as easy for to care for pets, but we strongly suggest that people don't get any reptiles. Okay, now now that we've uh, everybody who has any kind of lizard or reptile at home right now and is uh, all of a sudden, uh, oh my God, I've got to abandon it because it has salmonella. There's, I, I'm sure there's ways to keep things clean and, and still provide an okay life. You're not suggesting these people abandon their animals. Absolutely not. That's a great question. Um, certainly there are precautions people should take in terms of hand washing. Uh, some, some, some important things would be not having small children and people most at risk for serious disease uh, to, uh, you know, care for the animals directly. Uh, the, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that if children under five or people with weakened immune systems, uh, maybe pregnant women or older people uh, or people with uh, diseases that weaken their immune systems should have no contact with reptiles or amphibians uh, because of the salmonella risk. So, And then hand washing is very effective. Mm-hmm. And these, I guess they've been banned. You can't find them in local pet stores, but I can tell you they are readily oh, available. The turtles? the turtles? Yes, they are. And that's one of the reasons we were so happy to be able to get this message out. Although it's been illegal to sell these animals since 1975, we are seeing an increasing number of illegal sales. We're seeing them uh, at beach shops, uh, at, at shopping malls, street uh, markets, at flea markets, street, right. at street markets, and mm-hmm. then the worst, I think, is over the internet because it's really? so easy to make an impulse decision uh, at the click of a button, and then think about the the humane implications of this. They put these animals in basically in the mail. Um, 
you know, in these little horrible dishes, many of them arrive sick or dead. Uh, they, they may market them and say they won't have salmonella, but we have reason to believe they will have salmonella when they arrive. Um, right. It's a very bad idea all around. You know, after seven years of animal radio, I still <laughs> am learning something every day. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, it amazes me. Beth, Beth Price of the Humane Society of the United States joining us uh, with some very good advice about reptiles and especially in light of the uh, new Ninja Turtle movie coming out. Uh, and, and if we see these available at places, what can we do? That is such a good question. The Food and Drug Administration is actually the agency that enforces this law against selling small uh, turtles. And so the best thing to do would be to call them. And perhaps what we can do is put a link on your website to where to get the contact information for we the will FDA. Do that. We will do that. Of course, links to everything you've heard on today's show at AnimalRadio.com. Beth Price, the Humane Society of the United States, joining us. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank you. That's all we have time for this hour. Remember, there's 24 hours, seven days a week of Animal Radio at AnimalRadio.com. And uh, keep you updated right there for uh, the pet recall, uh, all the latest uh, brouhaha coming out of (laughs) wherever. Uh, Remember, if you get an animal this week, please... Spay or neuter. And if it's a cat... Don't declaw. And if you want a certain breed... Go to a breed rescue. We'll see you next week. Right here for more Animal Radio. Have a great week. Bye-bye.